Now, before you create a gradient in Photoshop, you might feel a little bit overwhelmed with all of the settings that are available within the gradient tool. There's also a couple of different ways to create gradients in Photoshop, and I'm gonna break down everything that you need to know about creating gradients in this video. To start things off, once you're here in Photoshop, the first thing you'll need to do is access the gradient tool, and that can be found right here in your toolbar, or you can press G on your keyboard. With that tool selected, you'll have a bunch of different options that appear in this upper settings bar here. We're gonna go through all of these options throughout this video, but for now, we're gonna focus on one particular thing called the gradient editor, and that's this little box right here. Double clicking on that box, it brings up our gradient editor, and this is where all the magic happens for your gradient styles and looks. As you can see right here, I have a preview of my active gradient, which is currently going from white to transparency represented by the checkerboard. You can access that exact gradient just by going to the basics folder and then down to this foreground to transparent gradient. If however, you want to have a colored gradient, for example, you can go and choose between any of the preset options that Photoshop has. There is a ton to choose from. So it's really easy rather than having to go and create your own gradients yourself. You can just go and use any of the preset options that are available to you here. Now that isn't to say that you can't customize any of these presets that you choose. So for example, I've chosen this orange preset as you can see in my preview, but let's say I wanna change this yellow color to something totally different. That's where these bottom handles come into play for us. These bottom handles not only control the position of your color, but also what color is actually active. By double clicking on that handle, it's going to open a color picker box for you. And here you can choose a completely different color for your gradient. As you can see, it's changing in the gradient preview in real time. So let's just say I want this nice blue color. I'll click okay. Now with this handle selected, you can not only change the color, but you can also change the position of where that color takes place in your gradient. So by just clicking and dragging on this little handle here, you can notice how my color is starting to transition further and further and become more dominant in my gradient. I can do the same thing on the other side, which is then basically making the transition point between my two colors more and more noticeable. As I bring them closer together, there's a very harsh transition between the two colors. The further apart they are, the softer of a gradient transition you will have. Now, if you wanna add more colors to your gradient, you can easily do that simply by clicking anywhere along the bottom of your gradient preview. So for example, I'll click right here. That's gonna add a new handle for me. Now with that handle selected, I can either double click on the handle itself or I can go to the color option down here. And then once again, I can just go and add a new color as I wish, just like so, clicking okay. And then now I have a new color that can be adjusted freely as needed. Now, after you create a new gradient, let's say you wanna save it for later use. And luckily you can actually just create gradient presets so you can easily access them later on and you just add on to the ones that are already built into Photoshop. So first you wanna set the name here. I'll just call this to example gradient. And then we'll go and click on the new option. That's gonna add our new gradient into the selected folder that we were just using. So now let's say that this is the gradient that we wanna work with and it's time to go and paint this onto our canvas. Clicking okay. I'm gonna first go and create a new layer just by clicking the new layer icon right down here. Now with all of our gradient settings selected, we can now choose our gradient type. Now the first option is called a linear gradient and that is going to basically create a transition gradient that goes from your first color and then transitions over, just as you see here in the gradient editor preview. Now the second option is the radial gradient, and this does a circular gradient starting with your beginning color, which is in this case is the blue, and then transitioning outwards to your other colors. The next option is the angle gradient. This sort of creates a weird gradient type thing with a that basically just goes in a circle with a harsh line between your beginning and end point. Then we have a reflected gradient, which just takes your starting color and then transitions to the final color on both ends of your gradient. So in this case, you can see how I have the starting point and then it transitions to the different colors on either side rather than being a continuous thing like you see in our gradient preview. And then finally, we have our diamond gradient. This just creates a more unique shape with the same colors that we have been using so far. Now to create any of these gradients, all you have to do is just click and drag on your canvas like so. The closer you drag, notice how I have a very sharp transition point. If I click and drag out further like this, then those colors start to blend together a lot better. So that is something to be aware of when you're painting your gradients onto an image. The further you drag out, the softer your gradient will be, no matter what it looks like 
in your gradient preview. Because as you can see, when I just drag out really short like this, I have a very sharp line or a transition point between each of my colors. So at this point, you understand how to paint a gradient onto your canvas manually. But what if you say want to fill a shape with a gradient, for example? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you next. I'm gonna delete that layer and we're gonna start fresh. I'm gonna create a new shape layer. I'll create a rectangle. And I'll just click and drag out like so just to create a rectangle on my canvas. So with this shape created, I have my fill color right here, but I can change this to a gradient just by clicking on the gradient option right there. And that's going to add a gradient into that specific shape. And notice how we have all of those same settings that we were just looking at previously. Now this green outline currently is just because of the stroke, so I'll set that to transparent. So we only have our gradient. Now currently we have our black to white gradient, as you can see here, and it's a linear gradient, which means it's going in a straight line from our one color to the other. Now in these options here, you have a couple different things that you can choose from starting with the type of gradient that you're working with. So right now I have linear, but I could change it to radial, angle, and so on, all just with this option here. The beauty of all this is rather than having to paint it on over and over on your image, you can just use this editor right here and it's gonna automatically change everything in real time for you without having to go and click and drag to update your gradient. The next option you have is the angle. And so by adjusting this, you can actually change the angle of your gradient within your specific shape. And then just like before, if you want to change the colors of your gradient, you can do so just by double clicking on any of these little swatches down here. You can just change the color like so. And now we have a red to white gradient. Now this process works for any type of shape that you're working with. And it's a really easy way just to quickly add gradients without having to deal with clipping masks and things like that. Now the final way that you can create a gradient is with a gradient fill layer. By going up to layer, new fill layer, gradient, you're gonna have this option to create a new layer. I'll just leave it set to this, click okay. And then now you have this little dialog box that appears as you can see here. Now you can double click on your gradient preview just to view the gradient editor. And then here you can go and do all of the same settings that you've done so far, but this time it's all taking place on this one gradient fill layer. And then likewise, you can change the different styles really easily, just like so, as well as you can change the angle of your gradient really quickly. So unlike our first method with just clicking and dragging across your canvas, this just gives you a little bit of a better way of doing things since it updates in real time and it's on its own layer. Now this brings us into our final few options down here, which is our reverse and our dither options. Now the dither, if you leave this checked off, what that will help you do is basically get rid of any banding, which is any harsh transitions between the colors in your gradient. This can happen if you're using a project that is an 8-bit and not 16-bit, simply because there's just not enough color information to properly display your gradient. What dither does is it just adds noise to smooth everything out and it gets the job done for you. So I like to keep this dither option checked off at all times. This is also a feature that you'll notice in the upper settings bar while the gradient tool is selected. Now as for the reverse option, it's pretty self-explanatory. Clicking on it will just reverse the colors in your gradient. So basically this color will switch over to here and vice versa. So rather than having to rebuild your whole gradient, you can just press reverse if you just wanted to switch the colors around. So now that you know how to create gradients in Photoshop, you're going to want to know how to create transparent gradients, including how to add those gradients onto layer masks. And that's exactly what I talk about in my other video that you can find up in the corner right now. Over there, you learn everything you need to know about transparent gradients, which has a few different new nuances that we didn't talk about in today's video. Now, if you learned something today and you are feeling more confident with the gradient tool, then make sure to hit that like button down below as it really makes a huge difference to support this channel. Thank you so much in advance. Anyways, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.